One of the most dangerous things about using circuits that include NMOS and PMOS transistors is a phenomenon called latch up. So let's look at a uh, microchip containing only a single NMOS and a single PMOS. Uh, this is, by the way, the same uh, chip that we saw being fabricated using the low cost uh, flow. We are just looking at the NMOS and the PMOS, we're not even looking at the metal wires. But the conclusions that we will make about this very simple structure apply across any um, complicated die and it applies even more fundamentally. The problem here is that when we fabricate NMOS and PMOS transistors, we have to have a, a P-type substrate, or at least a P-type well, and an untype well to contain the PMOS transistors. And this combined with the fact that we have uh, contacts for ground and uh, uh, heavily doped areas for uh, sources and drains creates a parasitic bipolar structure between the NMOS and the PMOS. This parasitic bipolar structure is uh, in the steady state or in normal operation. It's not going to be very dangerous because when we draw it, when we uh, just extract it and look at it as a schematic, we will conclude that it is nearly impossible to turn on. So whereas there are bipolar transistors here that were created unintentionally, uh, these bipolar transistors seemingly cannot be turned on. So let's just look at where the bipolars exist. And um, it's very obvious here that we uh, have, for example, uh, an N-type at the source of the NMOS. And then we go to P-type in the substrate. And then we have N-type in the well. So we have an NPN structure, N P N. Even worse, we have an N plus P N structure. Uh, this is worse because we have a heavily doped emitter and a lightly doped collector. This creates uh, a bipolar with relatively good properties, and we don't want this bi bipolar to exist in the first place. Note, however, that this is a lateral bipolar, so that the area between the collector and the base is not big, which means that the properties of this bipolar transistor will uh, actually be weak. So we're talking about uh, current gain, which is kind of small. So this is not a very strong bipolar transistor, but it exists. Now, uh, the collector of this bipolar transistor is the end type of the well. And this is going to be collect connected to ground through uh, to supply actually through the N plus of the uh, well contact. There is a resistance RW where W stands for well, and this refers to the total resistance that we see through the well from the point that we enter the well to the point that we reach uh, the supply. This would include also the resistance of the contact to, uh, to, to supply. And uh, of course, there is a metal wire that con connects this contact to supply, but we're not drawing it here. So. When we look at the PMOS transistor, on the other hand, we have the source again, and it's connected to uh, P plus, and then we go to the N of the well, and then we have the P of the uh, substrate. And so we have a P and P structure. In fact, we have a P plus and P structure, so we have a P and P transistor. Again, the collector of this transistor is connected to ground through the ground contact of the substrate. And we have a resistance RS, where S stands for substrate, and it refers to the total resistance we see from the point we enter the substrate until we reach ground, which includes the resistance of uh, contact and the resistance of the substrate itself, which will dominate, as well as the negligible resistance we get from the metal wires used to connect us to ground. So we have two bipolar transistors that were created accidentally uh, just because and we don't have uh, we don't want them to exist but the question is are these bipolar transistors dangerous and will they uh, affect us in any way uh, and so notice that the two bipolar transistors are kind of enmeshed with each other and they are connected to each other 
they are not connected to each other by wires or by anything. They are connected to each other by virtue of the fact, for example, that uh, the base of, uh, of the uh, PNP transistor, which is the well, is also the collector of the NPN transistor. And the base of the uh, NPN transistor is the collector of the TNP transistor. So let's try to uh, draw the schematic that is uh, that, that corresponds to these two transistors. And we have the uh, NPN transistor first. Um, so this will be the source of the, uh, of the NMOS. So this is the source of the NMOS. Uh, and it is the emitter of the NPN transistor. And let's assume for a second that the source is connected to ground, uh, as is the case in uh, a CMOS inverter, for example. Uh, the source will generally be connected to a low voltage. Let's assume that it is connected to ground in this case, which is actually going to be the worst case for us. So it's safe enough to assume that that's the situation. And now the, the base of this NPN transistor is going to be uh, the body or the substrate. So we'll just give it the symbol B. And um, the collector will be the well. So the collector is the well. Now, um, if we look at the well, the well is going to connect to supply through the resistance R well. But at the same time, the well is also the base of the PMOS transistor. So this is the base of the PMOS transistor. So we have an enmeshment or like a connection that is fundamental here. Now, the uh, emitter of the uh, of the PNP transistor is connected to supply. Again, we are just assuming that it's connected to supply because it is the source of the PMOS. And in a in an in a, in a CMOS in a inverter, the PMOS source will be connected to supply. And again, a connection to supply will uh, expose us to the worst case. So let's assume that it is happening. Now, the collector of the uh, of the uh, PNP transistor is also the base of the NPN transistor. So we also have this connection. And the two are gonna connect to uh, ground through the substrate contact. But at first we're gonna see a substrate resistance RS. And so this is the equivalent circuit that we observe for these two, uh, for these two bipolar transistors. Ostensibly this structure should never turn on. Why is that so? Because there will always be a drop over the resistance RW and there will always be a drop over the resistance RS. Now, in the steady state, we can assume that there is no current flowing in, uh, in either transistors, in either resistances, in which case there is no drop over RW and there is VDD at this node and there is also ground at this node. This means that there is not enough voltage to turn on the uh, base emitter junction here, and there isn't enough voltage to turn on this base emitter junction, and therefore these two transistors are cut off, and the current through them is indeed zero, and the whole structure can actually be in this state where everything is null. So this structure is, um, at first glance at least, impossible to turn on. In fact, uh, if we look at um, the, uh, the structure that we have here, it forms something called a uh, silicon controlled rectifier. So that this P plus is the source of the PMOS, this N type is the end of the well, this P type is the P type of the substrate, and this N plus is the source of the N MOS. And the structure forms uh, three PN junctions uh, between the P plus and the N, N and P, P and N plus. And if you look at these three PN junctions, they are actually are connected cathode to cathode or anode to anode, which means it's impossible to turn all three on together. And therefore, it's impossible to have a current flowing between supply and ground in this structure because we have PN junctions that would prevent this. However, this conclusion is misleading because in some transient conditions, we can actually have current flowing through this structure. And the problem is, when current does flow, it will not stop flowing.